Welcome back to this week's Real Country File. This week we actually have a sponsor. It's sponsored by the Midland Machinery Show, which is coming up on the 16th and 17th of November. I'll be there definitely on the second day and if we can make it as well on the first day. I'm gonna put a, a link below this video where you can click it and you can get free tickets and subscribe. The more people that subscribe, the more catering that they need to do and hopefully there'll be plenty of bacon rolls for everyone. Anyway, this week, Angela has been to the Farm Innovation Show. She's got a bit of a report from up there and also Stephen visits a turkey farmer in Lancashire and they're talking about the effects of bird flus having on the rest of the country and specifically that region. So over to Stephen. Avian influenza, bird flu is having a devastating effect on farms all across the UK uh, and it's come to a head this week on one farm in particular in Lancashire. So John, tell us a little bit about about you and the, the family farm here. Yeah, we 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 have a farm shop on the farm. Uh, it's been open just over ten years now. Uh, it's done really well for us. Uh, we also have obviously turkeys, which is, we did have turkeys. Uh, cows on the farm. We rear our own beef for the farm, uh, and also grow a bit of a few tomatoes. And, stuff like that we had the greenhouses in summer so the greenhouses in summer with tomatoes are then usually or as they were at the weekend when i came full of turkeys ready for christmas yeah that yeah that's correct yeah we always put the turkeys in the greenhouse at this time of the year for the last run up to christmas and unfortunately you are now at the front line of the avian uh, influenza tell us the the timeline john for how, how you know, when did you first get wind? How did you know? It was it was last most probably Thursday night stroke Friday morning. Friday morning we really knew something was wrong. Uh, and it, 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 it when you look back, it's happened so quick because you've ring Defer up. They come out almost straight away. Luckily, uh, spent a long time here. Uh, because obviously you have to do, and and it was just it was just a case of getting the things in motions. Late Saturday night, Sunday morning, we knew that it was bird flu, and then it was just just a shock. It was just, but like it's like I said, the anim the lad that was assigned to me from Animal Health, he's only a young lad, but he's been amazing, uh, amazing with me, and he's just like told me what's going to happen the next day and the next day and so on from so on and it's I mean it has gone pretty smoothly for them that they've come in done the job and uh, they've and, all gone now and today's Wednesday yesterday that was the day that they came in and, and killed all your birds yesterday yeah they come yesterday morning uh, uh, we was they asked us if we wanted to help we wanted to and then powers from above wouldn't let us help for whatever reason. Uh, I think they just wanted us to keep out of the way because it was too upsetting. And I think most probably looking back at it, it could have been right, you know. But uh, they soon got on with it and they soon got it done. It was very quick. How many how many birds are we talking about, John? And, and, and you know, is it would it have been a big year for you or a normal year or? Yeah, no, no, it's a big, was bigger year for me than it's ever been before because we'd have quite a few more turkeys on. Maybe, I said around about 4,000, maybe just shy of 4,000. Uh, and, and I had like extra customers who wanted turkeys earlier before Christmas. Um, we was going to bone them out as boneless turkeys. Uh, and we just lost the whole lot. We, We've lost all our wholesale business. We've lost most probably half the sales in shop, most probably by Christmas. Because uh, people wanted one of our, you get, if they want one of our turkeys, they want one of our turkeys and, and something else won't do, will it? So, uh, we'll have to just see what happens this next this next month or two on the run up. I think it's, it's fair to say that looking on your Facebook page for the shop, you, you have had a massive outpouring from the local community supporting you through this absolutely devastating time. Oh, oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, everybody's just wishing us well. We've just had a card now and some flowers, and 
everybody, even businesses that we deal with, nobody, it's, everyone's rung up saying, don't make, don't pay us this week. It don't matter. Just get on with what you're doing, and we'll sort it out when you reopen. Even two of them who was, who have suppliers have, have offered us money if we need it uh, because the financial bloat of this is, is massive for us and, and again we don't know where we're going on that side either so, so you were saying you don't you don't know how much you're going to get compensation or when you're going to get compensation uh, he did say it is pretty quick if I agree to it uh, within three weeks uh, it can be up to uh, which is which is which is quick we still don't know the amount we don't roughly know the amount we don't don't know anything i think they go away and they've got to spend days looking at i suppose it's a big job for them as well to evaluate it but i don't think you're going to get you might get your cost back if we're lucky if we can get a cost back then we're we're, we're, we're happy i don't think there's nothing else out of it and um, in terms of those customers who are we were now saying, you know, the lovely things uh, about you. Um, I, I've I've known you ten plus years, and I know just how much their support means. And I'm guessing you'll be you'll be thinking of a plan B and a plan C to try and fulfil their orders. And no stone left unturned, John. I'm guessing. No, we've been on to. I've got friends, obviously, who do the same as me uh, in the turkey job. We've, we've bought up not a lot of turkeys but we've bought up the surplus we've got uh, there is different things like uh, boneless turkey breast meat we can get our hands on as much as that as we want that's local as well uh, so like turkey rolls instead of a whole turkey so that's like a joint uh, and also we've got other things to offer them like our own beef and, and stuff like that uh, you know there is still things there's still plenty of food to eat it's just getting what people want from now on because we did certain things that nobody else does uh, and that's the hardest bit to go around in in terms of the story of bird flu and getting it out there in it, it appears to have been a little bit under the kind of national media the kind of publicity wise it hasn't really been massive I know there's been some stuff with the RSPB hasn't there with you know some really devastating effects on on wildlife, on wild bird colonies, but you were saying that not not really up until this week been much out there at all. No, no, I have a, an app on my phone and it pings every night and tells me what was been an outbreak. And all summer Devon's been back. It's every day Devon, Devon, Devon. It was nowhere else. And uh, then it's moved. It seemed to move across to like Lincolnshire. Uh, places like that, uh, Sussex and that, even like into Yorkshire now is quite, quite hot. And then it, it just came here. It just, it started in, I think one in Pilling and towards that way, a couple of cases there. Then it went quiet for a bit. And then here it's just done, I think it's done five, six, and one, two, three, four, five farms all in this area. All which all all in a row really here we in two two three miles of each other as a crow flies it's just done us all and some backyard smaller units as well like you know so it, it's really spread now and you know the yeah but the bird flu is funny it can like disappear from around here now for a bit or it might never come back here again you know it's it, it's the problem is the one we've got is the virus is still the virus from last year is is about and there's a new virus about so that's what's making it and that's a lot worse than last year's virus uh, from what I can gather uh, and it's it, it, it is doing a lot of damage we we're studying what is normally a you know a really busy car park it's it's blocked off and there's no members of the public uh, allowed in uh, we're hearing the shop door looking out when when are you allowed to reopen i know you do a lot of beef as well yeah, don't you yeah your farm shop has a lot of veg yeah. you're allowed to get public back in soon yeah well that that was uh, one thing he was from the man from defra was stating he didn't want us to show up because 
and he didn't put an order on us for to shut. We was like it was a choice and a discussion to shut because of what was going on on the farm, which was I think was the right one. Uh, now they've gone, we can open up, but we just need another day. So tomorrow we're just going to get everything right and make sure everything's looking right, uh, and then we're open again on Friday. And that that'll be all your loyal customers coming back then. And yeah, I, 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 I was a bit worried at the start, but the amount of people that's been this week so far and said sorry and all like you say the Facebook page, everything else is people has rung us. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping they'll all come back and I'm sure they will. Really tough time for any farmer. You and Kath have built up this business. Several kind of knockbacks and, and several times you've, you know, you've forged ahead. How are you both feeling at the minute? Uh, I think once we reopen and, and, and like I say, get busy again, we'll, we'll focus just on the shop for now. Uh, I can't actually go on my farm really because it's still till they come and see me on Monday and tell me what my plan is uh, what I can do and what I can't do uh, and what that involves uh, I can't even go on uh, which so we're just stopping in the shop and we're just going to run that and try and uh, get along as best we can with that I'm sure as with everything, I've, like I said, I've known you 10 years, I'm sure this will be another challenge that you'll get over, John, and I know that uh, on behalf of all your customers and all those messages, you know, keep the faith, keep farming, and and just here's to a better 12 months and a bit of good luck, mate. Yeah, yeah. We, we need, well, we need a bit of luck now, we've had enough bad luck, and, uh, and I'm sure once we find out what we can do, and how we can do it, uh, we'll be away with it and we'll be up and running again. We're not giving up. That's the spirit, and we'll yeah. be back to see just how that's going on the real country file, if that's all right, mate. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks for that, Stephen. So it's difficult and interesting times at the moment in all sectors of agriculture. Anyway, don't forget, this week we are sponsored by Middle Machinery Show. I know I've already said it, but I'm just going to remind you, there is a link below that you can, you can get your tickets. You'll see a vast range of machinery on display there. And also there's a couple of different seminars at there. Obviously check things like that out on their website. Hopefully we'll see you there. Anyway, over to Angela, who's been at the Farm Innovation Show this week. Right, today I've gone out and about. I've arrived at the NEC this morning and I'm at the Farm Business Innovation Show. So I'm here with Tom, who's involved in running the event. So Tom, yeah. quick summary, what is this show all about? Um, so Farm Business Innovation Expo, it's the only show dedicated to farm diversification. So landowners, farm owners, country estates who attend the show to diversify their land and increase their revenue streams. We kind of just give them all the ideas under one roof. So how many exhibitors roughly have you got uh, here today? So around 350 suppliers you know, ranging from glamping products to solar and renewables through to cryptocurrency farming. It's really everything combined. Okay, great. So really any farmer from any sector that just wants to have a, a few ideas and get inspired about yeah. what else to do with their land would be uh, Precisely. The place land, to come. Landowners that don't want to milk cows for the rest of their lives. Um, they want to diversify their lands. They may not have all the ideas or tools to do so. So they attend the show and we can provide them, you know, with education through the seminars. And as I said, 350 suppliers that can give them ideas to take their business to the next level. Okay. And so after this week, if people want to sort of revisit um, the exhibitors in terms of like, can they look at them online on your website yep. still? Or how long will the website be? Absolutely. So the website is going to be live um, throughout uh, for the rest of the year. Um, just visit farmbusinessshow.co.uk go to the exhibitors tab and see all the supplies that are here today. Great, right, I'm off to have a look around the showground now. <laughs> Brilliant. So by, by that, so any questions ask me to so now I've just arrived at the Farming Community Network here with Steve who's focusing on the Staffordshire area. So Steve, 
farming community network in a nutshell what is it okay well i'm one of 400 volunteers who uh, cover the country and we support farmers in times of difficulty for them uh, we find that farmers at the moment are suffering isolation uh, depression um, a lot of issues involved with farming that have never manifested before and because we're all farming specialists we can go and talk the farmers language and we can just be there as a, as a friend with them to help them through difficult times. So you can actually pay a visit on farm or the people can just ring you up and have a chat over the phone? And... Yeah, yeah. the bulk of what we do myself at the moment is over the phone and very often it's just that one phone call that can help farmers realise that things aren't as bad as they thought they were and um, just to have a friend who understands farming is a big thing for many farmers. Yeah, and I've, I've been reading your, um, your Fit for Farming book actually and this is a brilliant uh, piece of literature, so how can people get this? People can get a copy of that and, and one very good website that I need to mention is one called Farmwell, which is one, which is one that we use as FCN and that farmers can get lots of information about there about mental health, depression, anxiety, keeping fit, uh, having the right diet and it's all very professional stuff. Um, worth mentioning that Prince Charles, now King Charles, is our patron. I've been involved with, the, with this company for 27 years and we've distributed, uh, helped people through foot and mouth and that sort of thing. Right, okay, so first point of contact is go on the website or call the helpline number and we'll put the details of that on the video description link as well. So I'm just here now with Ian on the cherry product stand and he's promoting these new uh, fire extinguishers. So Ian, why, why are these different than standard old fashioned extinguishers? Okay, so these are a fully composite fire extinguisher. Um, they're made from Kevlar um, as the inner core body form. Being made from a um, composite material means that they don't have to be serviced in the same way as traditional steel extinguishers and because of that you can service them yourself so no corrodible parts inside and when you come to do your service it's just an external visual inspection which anybody can do with a simple training video or as i'm going to explain to you now so a service is as simple as can you read the instructions of the, um, how to operate the extinguisher is the tamper tag intact and which shows that the pin hasn't been out and nobody has messed around the extinguisher is the nozzle clear or the pipe um, intact, hasn't been damaged um, on there. With the rest of the um, service, uh, you just check the condition of it. If it looks all in good order, the bottom has a magnet. Take the magnet out, you wave it under the gauge, and assuming the gauge goes back into the green, that tells you that it's charged and the needle isn't stuck. So that service is done. Oh, yeah, keep safe on your farm. Thank you very much. We have to make sure that your budget is the one that will achieve and exceed your goals and objectives. And then your business plan or one sheet, a big summary of your business plan to help and support you and guide you through all of your all of your assets in your business. Um, Paddy is here on Express Express Vending, so um, he's promoting his vending machines today. And all you do is just tap with your card and then in the egg vending machine the door pops open there it is so just to wrap up really um don't underestimate your skills and your knowledge it's, it's a huge value to any diversified business we're, we're really passionate people in agriculture and we need to share that with our potential customers well that's it for today i've had a really good look round. there have been so many um, interesting stands that I've chatted to people about their farm diversification projects on. So I think it's time for me just to have a bit of a rest and catch up again next year. That is about it for this week. So thanks for everyone that's took part in this week's episode. Don't forget if you've got any stories, let us know. And also check out the link below. And if you want to go, I might see you on either the 16th or the 17th of November at the Midland Machinery Show, which is going to soon be one of the biggest outdoor machinery shows in the country so see you all next week or maybe there and once again thanks for watching